Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to Inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. Today we have the last of these New Orleans collection inks from Papier Plume. Uh, this is the little bottle they come in. There's a picture of the flower itself, the Garden District Azalea. Uh, I have azaleas, uh, well I have an azalea I guess in my yard and uh, they capture the color of this flower really really well. So good job on uh, that Papier Plume. Uh, they sent me the entire bottle this time to check out. This is the first time I've gotten a bottle of this stuff. Uh, and it has this cool sort of uh, you know, wax on the top of the cap. Don't worry about that, it's not actually attached to the bottle. You can open this up. Although this little drip on mine is very long, I keep seeing my fingers. All comes off at once, so there you go. And that's what the ink looks like in the bottle. I don't want to tip it too much because these are filled pretty close to the brim. Uh, I hear that they're, this is going to be the last of them. There aren't going to be any more of these um, uh, New Orleans collection inks and that this uh, will have about 60 bottles made so if you want one of these get on it quick they'll go uh, they'll go up for sale on Friday at 11 a.m. CST I believe and uh, they won't last long so don't dilly dally if and you want this ink at the end of the review uh, definitely go there I'll put the link in the uh, in the, the description so here you go. All right, so that's that. Let's take a look at what it looks like on paper. This is, of course, my usual Rhodia pad that I use. Uh, I'm almost out of this one, actually. I've only got a few left on this uh, this particular pad. Gonna have to get some more. Luckily, I'll be at the Dallas Pin Show here coming up soon, so I'll have uh, lots of paper to choose from. That'll be pretty awesome. So if you see me in Dallas, come say hi. I will be uh, probably at the Franklin Kristoff table is where I'll be. So there you go, helping out the wife and uh, and stuff. So that'll be fun. Uh, this is uh, a really cool kind of, I don't know, peachy pink sort of ink, I suppose you'd say. And one interesting thing about this ink is that it definitely dries darker than it goes down. So when I was, uh, when you draw, when, you, when I, when, bleh, when I write with it, I tend to write fairly quickly. And uh, this ink is a little bit on the thin side, as I uh, say here. Um, and so it doesn't look all that great to me when I'm writing. And that was... I was a little disappointed in that, but as it dries, it actually comes out looking very nice. So I'm really pleasantly surprised by that. So, you know, don't judge an ink by the first couple of seconds it hits the page, I suppose, is the message there. You'll notice here that these uh, two writing samples here are very different pens. Uh, the larger ones, this one right here, this nib, uh, is this Pilot Vanishing Point. This is a medium nib on this guy. Uh, and uh, I really quite like the vanishing point now. For a while I wasn't into it because I didn't like the nib I had, but got a new nib, bang, very, very good. So uh, if you don't like your vanishing point, go see uh, Martin, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. He's at fountain pin shows and that sort of thing. He's doing repairs and he's got a bunch of vanishing points. Dude knows vanishing points. Uh, this one is, of course, the old Pilot Metropolitan. This is a fine nib, and the Pilot Metro has a very, very fine nib. Let's try and get it to focus on this. Uh, maybe not. There we go. That's better. You can see it's a very fine nib. I mean, so much different from this medium nib, even though both are pilots. Very, very different nibs. So, uh, I think I get actually more bleed, feather, and spread from this ink in the fine nib than I do in the medium. And I think that's probably because this nib is so darn fine that I think it kind of like cuts across the fibers in the, uh, the copy paper. We'll look at the copy paper sample here in just a sec. Um, as far as flow, thin, but seems kind of wet enough. It's not super wet, it's not a gusher or anything, but it doesn't seem to have any problems. And, uh, yeah, there, there you go, that's kind of that. So let's take a look at this copy paper sample right quick. Got a bunch of different papers uh, with this ink on it, so we'll look at those too. But this is the copy paper sample, and as you can see here, the top one is the Metro sample. Get that eyelash up there. And uh, you can see that there's definitely a little bit of, uh, of uh, feather, you know, here-ish, uh, a little bit of spread, not a whole lot, but some. And then here in the Vanishing Point sample, a bit less, although it might just be that there's a much wider nib and so it spreads more than it feathers. Uh, but I don't really think so. This is kind of how it came out of the pen, so that's pretty cool. Then you turn it over and there's actually quite a bit of bleed and stuff here. Now, I don't really think this is a problem for this ink because if you're gonna be writing with this ink, you're probably not writing on 
uh, lame copy paper like this. She'll probably be writing in, I don't know, journals or cards or, I don't know, some other, some art maybe you might use this for. Uh, maybe you're coloring azaleas and you need the perfect ink. Well, this will look cool. Uh, so probably not going to be using it on this paper anyway, but there you go. Nonetheless, it does have some uh, bleeding, feathering, and spreading on the copy paper sample. Oh, and as I said, it seems like there's more from this bit right here, which is the, the fine metropolitan than there is here from the vanishing point. This one's got a lot of ghosting and show through, but that's just because it's putting down more ink and it's wider. But here I think we've got legit bleed, which is very strange. So anyway, that's the thing that happens. All right, I'll put that aside. Um, uh, let's see, the writing sample here. You can see more pictures of this on the blog. That's inkdependence.com, check that out. And here, go ahead and zoom in a skosh. That's a double skosh. All right, cool. I am looking forward to having getting a uh, maybe one of the new iPhones with the double camera. I can just poke a button and it'll zoom in double. That would be awesome. Any uh here's a bunch of like reddish inks. Uh, this one is uh, of course Garden District, Garden District Azalea. Uh, this one I thought was Schaefer Script Red. I've been thinking it was for a while, uh, but it's actually not. I was looking back through my notes, and this is a Tecker that I have, a Tecker ink, which is this one. Uh, I gotta review this one eventually, but uh, it's a very nice, like, tomato-y red, uh, and it's kind of darkened over time. This is Franklin Kristoff Arushi Red, which I'll have on the blog very soon. Uh, I believe you can also get Franklin Kristoff inks at uh, Papier Plume, so if you're near Papier Plume, check that out. Um, and then what else do I have? Ah, Sites Cruz, Sites Cruznock. I think I got that right. Um, which is tomato red. It's a very nice uh, deep red color. And then this one, which I was really surprised about, and I'm not sure really what's going on here, but this is called Lover's Red. It's a Papier Plume ink, and it is not exactly red. It's more like, I don't know, like a, a really deep maroon, perhaps. So I was expecting a very different color out of that, but that's what I got. So there you go. And this is the, the sample vial. It's kind of that color. It's a very deep maroon, maybe like a very like a very, uh, like a dried bloody red. So if you like oxblood, maybe this is the one for you. Anyway, so there you go. I don't really have any other like pinkish inks uh, on tap at the moment, so I can't have anything like incredibly close, but there you go with some reds and stuff like that. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, water test. Give it a little bit of a spritz here. All right, there we go. And it looks like it's kind of washing away. It didn't go down all that heavily anyway. One thing about an undersaturated ink like this one, or I guess an ink with low saturation, depending on your point of view, is that uh, sometimes they don't work quite as well on Rhodia as they will on other papers. So if you use this on something that was a little bit more absorbent than Rhodia, you probably get better, uh, better results. And I'll show you a few of those soon. So... Like, I don't love it on Tomoe River, oddly enough. Everybody loves Tomoe River, but this one doesn't look that great on there. It's just kind of thin, so it doesn't soak in. And you can see where I sprayed the water, man, just kind of, kind of gone. So, there you go. Not water resistant, even in a little bit. Uh, just uh, like it came up here, and it's kind of gone. So, don't get water near this ink. Probably not a problem, but don't get water near this ink. That is a good thing to know. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other papers. Uh, this is a little page out of one of my, uh, out of this write pads. Uh, if you know, uh, write notepads, they have very cool little tablets and stuff. Uh, this is a, a very small one, they're a little miniature. I don't even know if it has a name yet. Uh, it doesn't seem to. I don't know what it's called, but it's got these little perforated pages. It's very cool. Um, thick cardstock covers. Nice paper inside. You get a little bit of bleed from the swatch, but from the writing, not really much at all. And I think it looks quite nice on here. Yeah, it went down nicely. So. That's that card. All right. What else do I have? Ah, I have this, which is uh, currently inked journal. This is from uh, uh, Matt Armstrong, Pen Habit, and here is the entry from the uh, the White White Pilot Metro. I don't actually know why I didn't put these in my book. I I wrote them down elsewhere. I guess I didn't have my book handy when I was inking these pens up. So I just put like yesterday's date for this one and the other one I just drew a few minutes ago and I'll show you. This is a very nice uh, sort of heavy bond paper. I actually don't know what he uses, but no uh, no bleed through, looks good. Uh, and I think the ink actually looks very nice in here too. Better than it does on Rhodia and better than it does on uh, Tomoe River, which we'll see right now. This is a Tomoe River sample and I'm gonna splice in the, uh, the drawing sample here so uh, you can see that go down. Uh, I was just doing that and I had the camera here, so I went ahead and recorded it. And this is what you end up with, which is this. 
And it's a little bit pale, I think, for my taste. Just a little bit too pale, maybe. So I would use this on sort of medium grade paper, like heavy paper, but not coated. So not Clairefontaine or necessarily Rhodia or um, Tomoya River, unless you like the way this looks. I like the way it looks better in the currently inked journal from, uh, from the pen habit. So, you know, that's my two cents. And then let's look at chromatography right quick. I just did this chromatography. As you'll see there, it's uh, it, it didn't move very far up the strip, which was kind of interesting. Uh, it did sort of vacate the premises uh, down here. You don't have a whole lot, left, like a very light pink. Let's see if I can get the, there's a little bit of shadow. If you can see at the top, there's like a, a, like the top line is all like highlighter yellow, which is really interesting. I don't think I've seen that in any inks before. It's like a highlighter yellow, uh, you know, rimming there, which is very interesting. Aside from that, it's just this like nice carnation pink, but then you have this like highlighter bit up here. Very cool, very, uh, very sort of, well, I mean, it's a unique color as far as I can tell. So there you go, that's neat, huh? You can't really see it when there's too much light. You can see a little bit, but throw a little sh shade on there. Looks good. All right, so this has been Papier Plumes Garden District Azalea. Thanks very much for watching the video, for commenting, liking, subscribing, all those things that you do to help out your, uh, uh, your, you, come on, stay here. I'm gonna put a pen over here. Two pens over here. Yeah, stay there, good. Just throwing some extra stuff on here to clutter the picture because that's fun. All right. So this has been uh, Papier Plume's Garden District Azalea. This will only be on sale for a short time, so if you missed that window, this is just going to be sort of a reference video for you. But if you're watching this when it comes out, keep your eye on uh, the link in the description on Friday at around 11 CST, and uh, hopefully you can get in there and get some of this ink if you're into it. I know some people are just completionists, even if they aren't into pinks, but a pink ink is pretty cool to have around. Sometimes you'll need it. So there you go. Uh, I am Mike. This is inkdependence.com. This is youtube.com slash C slash Michael Madison. That's my YouTube channel. You're probably on that now. Uh, you can also find me as at inkdependence on uh, Instagram. And you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can help support the blog. That would be awesome. So like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Peace out.